we are asked to factor the given expressions with fractional exponents. For number one, we're given two x raised to the power of two thirds plus four x raised to the power of one third. Remember, the first step in factoring is always to factor out the greatest common factor. To help us identify the greatest common factor, let's rewrite x raised to the power of two thirds as x raised to the power of one third squared using the power property of exponents shown here. So the given expression is equal to two times x raised to the power of one third squared. Notice here, we would multiply the exponents. We still have x raised to the power of two thirds. And then we have plus four times x raised to the power of one third, which we'll also put in parentheses. Notice in this form, looking at these two products, both products contain a common factor of two, as well as a common factor of x raised to the power of one third, which means the greatest common factor is two x raised to the power of one third. We factor out two x raised to the power of one third from the first term. We're left with one factor of x raised to the power of one third we factor two x raised to the power of one third from four x raised to the power of one third, we're left with a factor of two. This is the factored form of the given expression with fractional exponents. Let's go ahead and check this by determining the product. Two x raised to the power of one third times x raised to the power of one third is two x raised to the power of one third plus one third, which is two thirds. Remember when multiplying, and the bases are the same, we add the exponents. And then we have plus two x raised to the power of one third times two, which is four x raised to the power of one third, which is the same as the given expression, which means this is factored correctly. Number two, we're given x raised to the power of two fifths minus seven x raised to the power of one fifth minus 18. Notice how the fractional exponents, again, do have a common denominator of five. So let's write x raised to the power of two fifths as x raised to the power of one fifth squared. So this expression is equal to x raised to the power of one fifth squared, and then minus seven. Let's write the x to the power of one fifth in parentheses, and then minus 18. Notice how this expression resembles the trinomial x squared minus seven x minus 18. Well, here we have one factor of x, and here we have two factors of x. In the given expression, here we have one factor of x to the one-fifth, and here we have two factors of x to the one-fifth, which means we can factor this expression in the same way we would factor this trinomial here. If this does factor, we will have two factors. The terms in the first positions will be x to the one-fifth, and x to the one-fifth because x to the one-fifth times x to the one-fifth is equal to x to the two-fifths or x to the one-fifth squared. The terms in the second positions are the factors of negative 18 that add to negative seven. And because negative nine times two is equal to negative 18 and negative nine plus two is equal to negative seven, one factor is x to the one-fifth minus nine, the other factor is x to the one-fifth plus two. This is the factored form of the given expression with fractional exponents. And again, let's determine this product to verify our work. x to the one-fifth times x to the one-fifth is equal to x raised to the power of one-fifth plus one-fifth, which is two-fifths. x to the one-fifth times two is equal to two x to the one-fifth and then we have negative nine times x to the one-fifth or minus nine x to the one-fifth. And then finally, negative nine times two is equal to negative 18 or minus 18. Combine like terms, we have x to the two-fifths minus seven x to the one-fifth minus 18. Verifying, this is factored correctly. Let's look at number three on the next slide. For number three, we have nine y to the one-half plus 30 y to the one-fourth plus 25. Looking at the fractional exponents, notice how we do not have a common denominator. Let's write one half as two fourths, so we do have a common denominator. So this is equal to nine y to the two fourths plus 30 y to the one fourth plus 25. From here, notice how if we ignore the denominators of the rational exponents, the given expression resembles 
the trinomial 9y squared plus 30y plus 25, which is a perfect square trinomial. So let's try to factor the given expression just like we factor a perfect square trinomial. So the first step is to check to make sure the first term and the third term are perfect squares. 9 y to the 2 fourths is a perfect square because it's equal to the square of 3 y to the 1 fourth. 5 is a perfect square because it's equal to the square of 5. Looking at the formula for a perfect square trinomial, this tells us that a is equal to 3 y to the 1 fourth and b is equal to 5. To verify this is a perfect square, we need to verify that 2ab is equal to 30y to the 1 fourth. So 2ab is equal to 2 times 3y to the 1 fourth times 5, which is equal to 30y to the 1 fourth, which means we can factor this expression using the factoring formula for a perfect square trinomial. This is equal to the square of a plus b, where a is 3y to the 1 fourth and b is 5, which means in factored form we have the square of 3 y to the 1 fourth plus 5. For this last example, I'll leave the check for you to multiply out to verify the square of the quantity 3 y to the 1 fourth plus 5 does equal the original expression. I hope you found this helpful.